Okay, so I've had these Joe Rocket gloves for probably less than a year. The index finger and the thumb both have materials on the fingertips that react to touch screens. And so I use a phone as my GPS. And so I can actually do things on my phone um, without taking my gloves off. So, so that's kind of nice. Uh, the past two weekends, I've gone on two different motorcycle trips, uh, one street trip and one dual sport trip. And on the end of the first day of this most recent dual sport trip, um, my index finger got a hole in it. And so this is just where um, they've just worn through. Um, I guess just pulling the clutch lever. Um, and I was under the impression that these were leather, but I just looked at the tag and they are 60% synthetic leather, polyester, neoprene, and I'm assuming PU is polyurethane. I don't know. If you've watched any of my other videos, you know I don't like to throw things away. And if you look at the stitching on these, um, you can see that that fingertip piece, strangely enough, maybe it's just the, the material that they use for the touch because the thumb's kind of that same way, is apparently softer than the rest of them, but it is sewn on separately. So I'm gonna attempt to just replace this with some leather. So I've got uh, just a scrap of actual leather. Um, this was, I had some leather chaps uh, from a long time ago that they come way too long and I trimmed them down. And so this is just a scrap from that. So I think I'm going to try to use this. Um, I don't think I will, I don't think this stuff will actually be touch reactive, but I don't really use my left hand to adjust things on my GPS anyway. So it's not really that big of a deal. My right side glove um, does have some wear on the fingertip, the index finger. It's not all the way through yet, but um, I'll see how long that one lasts me or see how this actually turns out. It, okay, so basically just need to turn the glove inside out. More specifically, the one finger that I need to repair. And you can use like an ink pen or something to shove up in the finger to get it turned inside out. And you'll see, um, you can kind of see the stitch lines around here. So you can either use like a sharp razor blade or if you've got an actual seam ripper. So I'm just gonna rip the seams out from around here um, down to probably about mid finger or so. Okay, so you can see I've got the two halves of the fingertip separated. Um, because this lower part of the finger actually kind of wraps up around the sides, it's much wider than the top of the finger piece. So um, I'm going to use this to make a pattern out of my other uh, donor fabric. But now I need to rip this seam across here. Okay, so I've got my donor piece. You can see that's really large for just fitting over my finger. Wraps around the fingertip. It needs all of that extra material. I'm going to use this, set that off to the side, and now I really, really should have, I believe this was the outside, so this, this was the right side, and so I'm going to just put a mark on that with my white pencil here, just so I have a way to identify the, the right side versus the wrong side of the fabric. I'm just going to trace this out. I think my ink pen is going to work better for this. And there we go. We have the new piece and the old piece. So we've got to remember when we sew this in, we need to sew it so that the right side is on the inside. Because remember, we turned it inside out. So to get things so they kind of match up, we'll sew across here first. And there's just about a quarter inch overlap on this piece. I'm just gonna get my sewing machine here. And I don't have any special needles. This is just a, a plain old run of the mill Singer sewing machine. Um, I probably should have some heavy duty needles. I am using some nylon thread, um, but I'm just gonna kind of wing it. I don't even know if I'm gonna try to pin it. Should I try to pin it? I should probably try to pin it. No, nope, my pins won't go through. 
gonna pull a little more stitching out of the finger just so I have a little more room to work. And I'm just gonna hope I can get all this in this machine to get it sewed back up. So I do have a walking foot attachment for this, um, which I think I'm actually gonna install. So the walking foot is nice because it's got a this bottom foot that will kind of walk and push the fabric through with it. Um, when working with a little bit heavier duty material, it's always helpful to have those feed dogs, um, have something pressing down between the feed dogs and the material so that it feeds at the appropriate rate. So I've got my walking foot installed now and I'm just gonna line up my fabric here. And it's my, unfortunately, I think my hands are gonna be in the way. I don't, I don't know how the professional sewing people that have YouTube channels keep their hands out of the way of everything. But so the stitch that was on here looked like it was about a two millimeter stitch length. So that's kind of what I'm shooting for. And yeah, you can't see anything. So I'll uh, show you the end result. And I'll turn it around and see if I can get the stitch going this way, just so you can see. So there's that stitch and I'm gonna clean some of these loose threads up and try to stitch it all back together. So I know I definitely need to go from the base of the finger up to the tip and do the same thing on this other side, go base of the finger up to the tip. Because as you can see, if you compare the width of the bottom part of the finger to the width of the top part of the finger, the bottom part is much wider. So I think I'm gonna start here on this outside edge maybe. So typically you would have all of your fabric and you would sew these and when they make them in the factory they probably sew them around the form so it's like a fake hand that's in there and once they sew it you've got all this excess fabric and then you can just trim close to your seam. Um, doing it this way I'm having to just try to sew super close to my edges which probably won't work out as well as a factory made. But we'll see how it turns out. Oh, and I missed. Dang it. So this is kind of what you get into is you can see I missed that section. So because I was sewing from the top side, I was sewing on my actual top fabric, but my bottom fabric had pulled over. So when that happens, you just rip it out and try it again. Okay, I switched over, I took my walking foot off and just put my regular foot with, or my regular arm with a zipper foot on there, um, just to see if that gives me the space I need. So, having some real difficulties getting this in here. Okay, so there's the replaced fingertip. So um, on the top side, there was this other other material, um, fake leather, or whatever, and the very tip of it, I didn't capture it in my stitch, but I'm not too concerned with that. Um, it was a huge pain to do on the equipment that I have. Um, I think it's gonna hold up fine for a little while. Um, I foresee my other glove I foresee this one wearing out before any of my stitching comes out. When this one wears out, I'll probably just buy some new gloves. This is kind of a huge pain. Got almost an hour in fixing this finger. And while I do enjoy doing stuff like this, um, my stitch quality isn't all that great. Probably because I'm just using a um, just kind of a basic sewing machine. If I had a heavy duty machine with the correct feet on it, uh, it'd probably turn out way better. Um, I still think I need to maybe trim some excess material um, close to my stitch because I can't feel on the tip of my finger in there. It's not super comfortable um, right through here. There's some bulk excess fabric in there that needs to be trimmed off, I can feel. Um, but that's going to get me by for a little bit. Um, 
it was kind of a try it, see if I can do it. Um, I know the process. I just don't really have the equipment to do it. Um, you could, if you had um, a thimble and a heavy duty needle, you could do this by hand if you didn't have a sewing machine, um, just using an um, look, you know, I don't remember the names of the stitches, but you have to look up the correct stitch so that you just get a, a nice stitch all the way around your finger. Um, be a good cheap way to repair the gloves. You know, these aren't super expensive. They're like 30 bucks or so, but this was free. Even if I made $30 an hour doing this kind of stuff, which I don't, um, this would still be a cheaper, cheaper method. So if you need to repair a uh, fingertip on a glove, that's how you can do it, just using some scrap material. Um, if you don't have any like scrap leather laying around, if you have like some old leather work gloves that all the fingers are torn out of, you could use a section out of the palm or a section out of the backside just for your source material. So that, that's gonna be it for this one, guys. Um, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Um, yeah. Until next time, we'll see you later.